They represent the ideal me as a writer. I only started it yesterday, which is intuitive writing. My answer has changed. I lost my train of thought. Hello, dear friend. Thank you so much for being here. Today's video is a tag kind of video. This is the writing progress process, the writing process tag. And I first heard about this tag from Kelly, Kelly Tai. I will leave the link to her video in the description. Definitely make sure to check her out. I thought the questions in this tag were really interesting and I wanted to answer them for you guys. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so I have the questions here on my phone. The first one is, what genres do you write? And up until very recently, I would say fantasy and magical realism only. Usually my stories always, usually always, like, my stories always have, yeah, always have an element of fantasy in them. Uh, this is just the kind of story I personally like to write. But uh, <laughs> recently my answer has changed because at the moment I'm writing a horror story and a sci-fi story. So I've never seen myself as a sci-fi writer and I think it's a very complex genre to write. But at the moment I am writing a time travel story, which for some people is fantasy and for other people it's sci-fi. And to me personally, I think like the kind of time travel that I write at least is fantasy. Although I do know <laughs> about the whole scientific side of time travel and there's definitely sci-fi stories that explore the scientific side very well but for me personally time travel is a more kind of mystical thing and I like to use it in that way in my stories and about the horror story like I never thought I would say I'm a horror writer I write horror but I guess I do because I'm writing one and it's not like really heavy stuff. I don't do body horror. I can't watch horror movies, especially like the ones that have gory things. Like I don't even like to watch like war movies or movies with a lot of fight scenes. Like <laughs> that's not my kind of thing. I don't like violence, but I do like psychological horror, some of it at least. And that's the kind of story I'm writing. I didn't set out to write a horror story, but when, once I started, that's what it became. So I guess, yeah, I write uh, <laughs> mostly fantasy. I think that's my answer. Okay, so the second question, what setting gets you the most productive? And at the moment, the setting that gets me the most productive is right here, my desk, but uh, I also really enjoy writing on my couch. It's just so comfortable to me, so cozy, like, you know, being on the couch with your computer or your notebook and writing. Yeah, I usually really get a lot done there too. Uh, but I always feel like I'm not working when I'm writing on the couch. It feels like, you know, I'm just chilling. And here it's more like, you know, I'm a writer, I'm so professional. Um, but on the couch is like, oh, this is my hobby, kind of like that, you know? So number three, if you have multiple story ideas, how do you go about picking which one to start on first? And I actually have a whole video on this, so I'll leave it in the cards somewhere here for you to check out if you want. But to put it simply, I think when it comes to novels, the answer is just never really the same. It's the amalgamation of the points that I mentioned in that video. But I think the story I pick always ends up being the one that will represent me as a writer the most out of all of the stories 
that I have planned to write. Represent me as a writer at this point in time. For example, right now I'm writing Project Snow and uh, I really identify with this project. I think it says a lot about who I am as a writer at this moment, but there are other projects that I have in mind that I feel like they represent the ideal me as a writer and I'm just not at that level yet. I don't feel like I am at least. So yes, it feels right. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Go watch the video if you think it will help you. So that's in terms of novels, but then we have short stories. And it took me a really long time to dip my toes into short story writing and the first short story I ever wrote is not finished yet because actually I only started it yesterday. For a really long time I was just really intimidated by short stories. But recently I actually had an idea for a short story. This is the only idea I'm writing because it's the only idea for a short story that I've had. Okay, so in the past I tried to start writing short stories based on ideas I had, but those ideas always, like literally always developed into full-length novels. And I didn't want them to, they were not my priority at the time, so I just didn't write anything. Uh, but this idea feels like a short story, so I'm really excited about it, and uh, it's that horror one <laughs> I was talking about. So I didn't really pick it. The story picked me. <laughs> That's so cliche. <laughs> I don't know what to say, like short stories. I'm a newbie. I, I don't think I can say anything about that yet. But I will be sharing my process writing this short story in particular, my first short story ever. So yeah, I'm really excited about that. And I'm also really excited to submit it to magazines because that's my goal at the end. You know, like I'm, I don't want to keep it for myself. I want to share it with the world and ask the world if it's any good. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> we took too long on that question. Let's move on. Do you outline? And yes, I do outline. You know, from multiple videos I've made that I have a very um, specific outlining process and... Um, Here's the thing, I do outline and I love outlining, like I couldn't, I don't think I could write a novel without outlining at this moment. I did start as a pencer when I was younger, but at the moment I just feel like I can't write a novel without outlining first. However, over the years I've been feeling more and more the need to not pence things, but like to write intuitively without any outline. So. At the moment I have two videos on my writing process, one is brainstorming, the other one is outlining and coming soon will be writing the zero draft. But when, when I finish that series or maybe even before that, I'm going to write a video on an extra step that I've been taking for my most recent stories, which is intuitive writing. And intuitive writing is the kind of writing where I just sit down and free write anything that I think is related to that story. And uh, that's not outlined, you know, whatever comes out of it, uh, I didn't plan for it. And I like to do that while I'm not officially working on a project. So for example, right now I'm working on Project Snow, but I'm intuitive writing for another project, Project Ghost. All in all, though, I do outline. <laughs> I need to stop giving these long answers. This is like 20 questions. The next question is, do you start your first draft with pen and paper, typewriter or computer? And my first draft so far, it's always been with computer. Uh, first of all, because my first draft is not really the first draft, because I also have the zero draft. I brainstorm on my notebook and part of my outline is also done on my notebook and while I write the first draft, sometimes I use my notebook to brainstorm other things related to it as I write, like that I come up with as I write. Uh, 
but the first draft itself it's always at the computer and I think that's also why I felt the need to do intuitive writing so intuitive writing is a step I always do on notebooks because I do think it's true that when I write with pen and paper I am more um, not creative but I don't know it just feels like more me it feels like what I'm writing is really coming from you know somewhere here instead of here and um, writing on a, com on a computer sometimes you know if I really get into the flow of writing sometimes that does happen and especially when I do Pomodoro sprints because I don't really have time to think I'm just like feeling everything and writing what I feel but I lost my train of thought so that's part of the reason why I added this step intuitive writing so that my first not draft but my first interaction with this project can be on pen and paper in where I feel the most myself. I hope I explained that well, I hope that wasn't too confusing. Number six, what do you do to get through writer's block? Okay, writer's block is a concept that I don't want to say I don't believe in it because uh, I've experienced it before but I just think it's not as big of a deal as sometimes we writers make it to be because I feel like we see writer's block as this physical obstacle that it really stops us from writing, it really stops us from uh, making progress in our writing but I just feel like maybe because I've been writing for so many years right now I always know how to get through it and I don't really think I experience it anymore because when I feel uninspired or unmotivated when I start doubting myself or when I feel like uh, <laughs> I don't know why I'm writing I'm not any good like I don't even know what to write I don't know how to write so when I get that kind of thought the thing that gets me going is really just forcing myself to sit down and write something and a lot of times what I do is I start by brainstorming so I always set a timer and tell myself okay for this amount of time I'm going to focus on this particular step and it's usually a very small step like I don't I don't tell myself okay I'm going to write this scene now no I tell myself okay I'm going to think about this scene and um, write down everything that comes to mind I don't have to write it well I don't have to be perfect I just need to explore this scene you know like be curious about it and sometimes it helps to listen to music and go on Pinterest like I don't really put pressure on myself I just try to remind myself that I'm curious about this story I want to know what happens and I want to make it happen I think it's hard to give advice when it comes to writer's block because I think the reason for each writer's block is different so I think it would depend on the reason why this person is feeling blocked but for me personally at the moment I just don't really suffer from writer's block and I think that's because I know myself as a writer and um, I know the reasons behind my writer's block when it comes number seven do you format your project from the beginning or worry about that later I worry about that later while I outline I only focus on scenes but then on the zero draft or the sometimes on the first draft I start writing down chapters so sometimes the chapter break is in the middle of a scene because of plot twists and stuff and cliffhangers blah blah, blah. but I'm not worried about it until the very end so if I'm writing and I feel like oh this feels like a good place to have a chapter break then I will write chapter XXX and I just move on and then at the end of the end of the end I just leave formatting for the very last steps I'm not too worried about it in the beginning 
Question number eight, do you edit as you go or when you're finished with the first draft? And I definitely edit when, I fin when I'm finished with the first draft because for many, 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 many years, I couldn't get through my first draft. And the reason for that was because I kept editing my sentences and I couldn't move on from, you know, a bad sentence and I just got stuck on it and just... I stopped editing in my first drafts and at the moment okay uh, now I'm saying my first draft but actually what I mean is my zero draft so this is kind of confusing my zero draft is when I sit down I set a Pomodoro sprint and I just write the whole time like I don't get stuck on things if I feel like I'm getting stuck on an idea I just uh, you know space space no, no, return, return, enter, enter, <laughs> the button. And I move on to the next thing that I know happens. This is because my zero draft is just an exploration draft. Like I'm there to explore the story, to learn more about it, to get to know the characters, get to know the situation, the setting, blah, blah, blah. But then in my first draft, that's when I want each scene to really be a complete scene. So I might edit stuff there because, you know, I already wrote the zero draft and the zero draft is probably a mess, but it's a mess I can work with. That's not a problem for me personally. So yeah, in the first draft, I do start editing, but not like nothing resembling the final edits. It's just a general edit to make each scene feel more like a scene so okay number nine after finishing your drafts manuscript how long do you give it a break before you start going back over it or do you give it a break at all and i used to give it a break i think maybe in the future i still will give it a break for some projects so i think it will depend on the project and so far, I've been giving my manuscripts a break between drafts, but with the project I'm currently working on, I'm not planning on taking any breaks, aside from the month when my manuscript will be in the hands of alpha readers uh, or critique partners. So it, I'm kind of experimenting with not giving it any break this year. So I will tell you how it went. Um, but the reason why I decided not to give it any break this year is because I don't really feel like I need one in the first stages at least. I think if I give it a break before I give it to someone else to read it, I will get discouraged or unmotivated. So I prefer to just you know, stay focused on the story for as long as I can, then send it to someone to read it and give it a break then. And then once they give it back to me, if I feel like I need to, you know, take a longer break, I want to read their feedback yet. But if I think I'm ready to get back to it, then I will. Uh, okay, so my camera stopped recording. I hope it recorded the end of question number nine but if not i'm sorry i'm just going to move on to number 10. so question number 10 is is there something that you prefer to do to get you through writing like playing music tv having your favorite drink or food etc i definitely like to have my drink so i usually drink coffee in the mornings or tea and those are my favorites sometimes hot chocolate, but uh, now that it's spring, I don't drink it as much. What else? I do listen to music. Each of my projects has a music playlist. And okay, fun fact is that my playlists are mostly made of FMVs, fan-made music videos, instead of, you know, just the original songs, because I like to listen to the characters from other shows that I love, talk while I write which I know like for most writers and <laughs> most writers I know this doesn't make sense because you know even the lyrics of some songs bother them and distract them but to me I, they just don't distract me they give me a like feeling 
good feeling or you know an emotion and yeah that's just what i like to listen to sometimes i also do listen to coffee shop music or ambience yeah i always like to have something in the background basically okay number 11 do you schedule your writing sessions and yes i do schedule my writing sessions i usually write in the mornings before work but i also really like to write at night before going to sleep or after i've done everything that i need to do that day so some writing sessions are more intuitive and i'm i'm someone who likes to do what she feels like doing so sometimes i have a plan for where i'm going to do that day but if i just really feel like writing and and i think i can change things up a little bit then i will just write you know uh being this kind of person is just uh, hard. Like, if I'm not doing what I feel like doing, it's really hard for me to get through the day. So even though I do schedule my writing sessions, I just love, love, love breaking the pattern and, uh, you know, doing what I want <laughs> at the wrong time. But So number 12. Do you have word count or chapter goals for your writing sessions? Uh, I never have word count goals, except for NaNoWriMo. Like when I do NaNoWriMo, I know I need to write this amount of words per day. But in general, I just track scenes. So today I have to write this amount of scenes. Not even chapters, because as I said before, chapters comes later. But yeah, I know more or less how many scenes I want to write in a day or in this specific in one specific writing session. So number 13. Are there any quirky things you do to make your projects more fun? I mean, I create a notion page for each of my projects and I really like keeping it updated and that's also where I track each of my writing sessions. I also shared that uh, in another video that I will leave it up there. But aside from that, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I think, I don't know. I just have fun writing, so yeah. Number 14. Do you work on multiple projects at one time? So my goal for this year is to focus on one single project, which is Project Snow. But so at the moment, that's the only novel I'm writing, but I'm also working on short stories on the side and I'm also doing intuitive writing for other projects. So, I mean, I still count it as working on only one project at a time because this is my main focus. And if there's one thing that I need to get done each day is to work on this novel. If I don't intuitive write for the other project, it's okay. If I don't work on my short story, it's okay, but I do need to uh, do the things I set out to do in this one project. So yeah. Number 15. How often do you research what you're writing? I do a lot of research in the beginning. So while I'm brainstorming and outlining, and I also do it when I'm editing and revising but while i'm drafting especially in the first stages of the novel i don't really stop to do a lot of research usually i just write a note to myself and i take care of it later number 16 how do you organize your projects so as i said i have a page for each project on my notion i also have a writing corner where i have like everything that I think is relevant to my author identity. But while I'm writing, I use Scrivener to organize my projects. So each project has a Scrivener document. So within that document, I have a place for the brainstorming stage, the outlining stage, the, the zero draft, the first draft, the second draft, blah, blah, blah. And uh, it's just very very well organized in my opinion it just it works really well for me okay number 17 
Do you reward or punish yourself for achieving or missing out on your writing goals? Not really. Maybe I should reward myself, but it's just because like every day I just reward myself for living. You know, like I I'm always uh, spoiling myself with little things like a cup of hot chocolate, uh, an episode of a series I'm watching or just a walk around my neighborhood. I don't know, I just see a lot of the things I do each day as a reward, as self-care. So I don't really feel the need to reward myself for writing necessarily. I just reward myself for, you know, being good to myself. <laughs> I reward myself for being good to myself by being good to myself and I don't punish myself like I think life has enough punishments <laughs> that uh, yeah I don't need more suffering like yeah <laughs> okay number 18 are there any works similar to your projects that you look for and use for inspiration and or comparison so I definitely have a list of works that really inspire me and especially in my reading list, like in the books I read, I have a section that is called This Book Is Me, I Am This Book and the books in that list definitely inspire my writing and my creativity and yeah, they just uh, really inspiring me <laughs> and I do have a hard time listing like titles that are similar to my stories when you are querying a lot of times you are encouraged to list titles that your novel could be found next to and I have a really hard time with that because most of my stories just feel like hard to categorize so yeah, that's a problem in terms of marketability, but yeah, I do have a lot of projects that inspire me. Okay, number 19. How early do you wait to start looking for and hiring editors? Okay, so the first people that read my stories are my alpha readers and uh, I let them read them usually after the second draft. After that, I work with their feedback and I do that until I think the story is finished, like ready for publication. And that's when I search for an editor, like before I really send it to agents, that's when I search for an editor. Because I just think that's when I would benefit the most from an editor once my story is completely polished, once I think I can't do any better than this, I will reach out to an editor and ask, do you agree? <laughs> yeah. Okay, and the last question, number 20. If you finished a first draft or a manuscript, tell us how you felt afterwards. If you're not through the first draft yet, tell us how you're feeling about it at the moment. And I have finished a first draft and a whole manuscript before and of course I felt really good and accomplished and I had finally proved to myself that I could finish something. But so there was only one manuscript that I finished completely. But when I finished it, I was already aware of some issues you would have in terms of marketability and um, I knew this couldn't be my debut novel, you know, maybe in the future I will still pick it up again and um, try to publish it, but at some point I knew that wasn't a project I could debut with. So... Yeah, I think once I finish Project Snow, I will feel just bursting with joy, like bursting with awe and uh, I'm also gonna be happy that I can finally work on my next project. <laughs>
Okay, so it's quite dark now. I hope the lighting didn't change that much in the video, but if it did, I'm sorry. But yes, uh, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions based on anything that I said, definitely leave them down below in the comments. And if you've watched so far, leave me a bear or a bear hug. And I'll see you in my next video. Okay. Bye.